Garrity! Grab a slushie or something from the convenience store down the street. Possibly pick me up some jube jubes while you're down there. Because we have another at-home edition of World of Fortnite for you. I'm your host, Sarah Weeface Lynn. And we have a great show for you today. We're going to change things up a little bit with some Able Cup highlights. Point of Interest tells the story of the Jonesies. And of course, we have everything the community is passing around in low ground. Recently though, Epic sent out a survey to players to get a better idea of the kinds of skins they would like to see added to the game. Here's a look at some of those concept skins, which could be a sneak peek into what might be coming in future releases. Remember, these are just concepts and won't necessarily be released, but it's still fun to potentially see into the future. Alright, that's enough with the skins, let's get started with some highlights from the Able Cup. Able Esports recently organized an open Fortnite tournament called the Able Cup that ended with an amazing finale on the 15th of May. Today, we'll be taking you through the best moments and highlights from the Able Cup and an overview of how the tournament happened. With a $1,000 prize pool, the Able Cup was a trios tournament with two qualifiers and a championship finale. The two qualifiers were held on May 4th and May 11th, and the top teams from the qualifiers earned their way into the finale. Each qualifier had 33 teams of three, and the top 16 teams made their way into the championship match on May 15th. Our favorite moment of the AWA Cup was hands down the team trying to sky base. During the qualifiers, Greed, Halar, and Modern Use went high up in the sky season one style, but with a vehicle with upgraded tires. This was totally unexpected by everyone watching, giving us all a good laugh as they proceeded to build into the storm circle. As awesome as sky bases are, they're also very noticeable, especially in a competitive match where players are constantly being wary of their surroundings. As expected, another team spotted them and shot them down. Modern Use's team survived the fall because of the altered tires, but now they were on the ground with barely any mats and everyone knowing exactly where they were. That mistake cost them the match, as Fatch and the squad came Came in and wiped them out immediately. They may not have won the match, but they surely created one of the most memorable moments of the tournament. Talking about Fatch's team, we saw them playing pretty aggressively and taking fights without being too cautious and conservative, a playstyle that's always great fun to watch. Pam, Carrie, and Fatch were spot on with their box fights and played with just the right amount of aggression. Shortly after eliminating the adventurous sky basing squad, their team quickly won the qualifier with a cheesy pickaxe kill. This team really had their strategy in place. In another situation, Fatch also got one of the best AR shots in the tournament and that too with a makeshift assault rifle. He had just looked down at an enemy ramping up and quickly landed consecutive shots while they were moving up just a second after Fatch had spotted them. This got the team a pretty easy squad wipe within seconds. Fatch definitely must must have a fantastic gaming chair. It was great to see cars finally being used seriously in competitive gaming. The recent tire upgrades have added a lot of utility to these vehicles, making them great for off-roading and taking the awkwardness out of it. A lot of teams used these upgraded vehicles in the Able Cup, resulting in a few car chases as well. While they aren't as easy to use as launch pads or ballers, they're certainly in a much better place now than they were for the last few seasons. With vehicles being in such good place and shockwave bows being a thing, mobility certainly isn't an issue in season 6. The championship finale matches certainly had some pretty intense moments. One of the best endings was in the first match itself, where it looked like we were heading towards a classic heal-off situation. The storm circle was closing in. A few players were trying to heal, but the rest of the teams were playing pretty confidently and pushing on. With the teams being so close to each other, with only a couple of walls between them, it was hard to tell who would win. Finally, Jordan and Pop wiped out player after player until they had the final one boxed up. With some clean edits and wall replacements, both of them shotgunned the last survivor at the same time. Jordan got the kill, and won the match for his team. This is what the leaderboard looked like going into the grand finale. Three teams had the clear lead, with Jordan's team having a whopping 30-point lead on the second team. Diddy defying an Instagram. Batch, Pam, and Carrie were at number three with 95 points and still had a shot of climbing up. The finale had a couple of great early engagements that led to teams dropping quickly. Diddy and the squad were tested early on at Craggy Cliffs, where they almost lost the match with a challenging first engagement. They fought it out and came out alive, not not wanting to give up their lead. At this point, both of the other top three teams were still alive and holding their place in the game.
game as well. The circle was closing in on the area between the spire and weeping woods, and teams were firing shots from both sides of the river. Surprisingly, the best players in this match didn't have the most points on the leaderboard. In a situation like this, teams fall quickly as the storm brings all of them together. Loki, Patat, and Artyaz put on their best performance in the Able Cup that match, completely dominating that situation. In the end, their team got quick kills on Danny and David, winning the match. Their team placed fourth on the final leaderboard while the top three were unchanged. However, Fatch's team went up from the third spot, putting Diddy's squad on the third, while Shipop, Drew, and Jordan had won the Able Cup with 139 points. Here are the top five teams that won the prize money in the Able Cup tournament. And welcome to another edition of Playing with Pooks. Last week, we dove into the NPC pool. So what we're gonna do is hop into a few games and see if we can't uh, find a few more NPCs to befriend. And I brought a buddy with me this time. NG is here, he is joined with me to hopefully make these games go a little bit smoother. All right, so if I'm not mistaken, Oh, she's right here. What do you know? Spark plugs here. Perfect. I just got some brick. Oh god, there's somebody here! Ah! Oh no! I didn't even hear this person land! No! NG! There's a llama right there? There are people definitely landing here with us. I'm gonna land with NG just so that things go south. I can blame him. Just kidding, NG. Never blame you for anything. <laughs> Uh-oh. Neon Salmon's friend is here! A flapper. Hello, Sparkplug. Yes, don't mind if I do. I will upgrade to a... That was a close one. Doing me a solid and driving by trees for me to hit. Oh gosh. Where's your friend? Yeah, Uba's here. Jonesy the first. The first Jonesy. Deal damage this match only. Oh, I can deal damage. Don't you even worry about it. Laura Croft! Grappler bow exotic? Okay, so you can buy the grappler bow from her. That's pretty neat. You can hire her. Uh, heck yes. Uh, there's a guy looking at me. 157. They're just hard scoping. Shooting at Lara Croft. So it's those guys there. Us. Chill, bud. Please. Oh, no. Oh, my God. There we go.
53 fall damage on that one guy. I took height. Knocked one. Let's go! Oh my gosh! Laura Croft got the win for us! how useful NPCs can be. That was absolutely phenomenal. GG's, well played, Lara Croft, clutched up, got the victory <laughs> Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully I outlined and highlighted just exactly how much fun and helpful NPCs in the game can possibly be. There are tons of new ones that have been added in Season 6, so uh, what better way to check them out than to hop into a game and experience perhaps what I just did for you and your duo partner. That is going to be all for me for this edition of Playing With Pooks, but I will see you on the next one. Oh my god, pretty much that's the guy. Get a shot on the Oh my, he's fucking get- Oh my god! Oh my- Oh my- You shot his dead! You shot his dead! What? No, his teammate died. Bro, he's popping off. I'm actually crazy! Oh my god, 19 hours, bro! I'm actually crazy, what? Come on, come get the loot over here, but that's not even a good loot pile. There, yeah, there's more, yeah. Turn it 180. Now we just wait. Come on, buddy. Sometimes watching hot drops can make you think Fortnite is only about top tier plays and impossible shots, but really what it's about is the community. That's why we have low ground. First up, Mickey TV 59 recreates the zero point.
Honestly, in my opinion, that might be a little bit too well done for low ground, but I'll let this one slide because it is actually so cool. Next up, Dr. Boofer replaces all the sounds in Fortnite with their own voice. Boom, shit, boom, shit, 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 shit. I know it might be a little bit stupid, but it's the good kind of harmless stupid that is probably going to bring me laughter all week long. Every now and then, we have to do a karma check though, and fuck can't certainly doesn't disappoint. Remember kids, always check your karma and eat your Wheaties, otherwise your engine might overheat. I might have mixed that up there. No matter. Next up, Python Plays 12 finds out that sometimes Fortnite tells you to take a break. Well, that was jarring. Time to head back to the lobby to get fired up for the next game. And finally, Game Spawn finds out that Aurelia doesn't like thieves. So it would seem that there is no honor among thieves, nor NPCs. Also, she seems to be quite a terrible shot. But moving on, Point of Interest has the story of the Jonesies. The characters Jonesy and Ramirez have always been the face of Fortnite. Ramirez had her own storyline in Save the World, which was about reuniting her with her family. While that storyline was never really given a proper conclusion, Jonesy's story in Battle Royale has started, and it is turning out to be super interesting. We have alternate realities, multiple versions of characters, time travel, and even a conspiracy against the Seven, and all of this has something to do with Jonesy. Today we'll be taking you through the story of the Jonesies. Jonesy wasn't really a main character in the story for a very long time. Back at the beginning of Season 8, when the volcano erupted in the end of Season event, Jonesy and Peely went into a bunker to protect themselves from the lava it was spewing all over the map. An unknown amount of time passed before the Centennial opened the bunker. At this point, Jonesy was still alive, but he had a long beard and hair and had turned Peely into a smoothie to feed himself. When Jonesy and Peely came out of the bunker, they were in the future. Tilted Towers and Rito Row had been reconstructed as their futuristic versions, and the island had some pretty advanced means of transport. This version of Jonesy is called Bunker Jonesy, and later became an NPC in Chapter 2. Jonesy is the most used character in skins, but this was the first time we saw him as part of the lore. The next Jonesy we encountered was a few seasons later during the device event. When Midas tried to control the storm using the power of the device, he messed up our reality for a few seconds. We were suddenly transported to the IO headquarters in another part of the universe, where we met Agent Jonesy. He wasn't hostile towards us, so we know he isn't a bad guy, but he was pretty surprised to see us there. Over the next few seasons, Agent Jonesy became a crucial part of the Fortnite storyline. Now here's where it gets weird. 
When Bunker Jonesy became an NPC in Season 5, which is also the season where Agent Jonesy was on our island, he revealed that there were multiple versions of Jonesy in the world. It turns out that Jonesy is aware of being in the loop and claims to be the original Jonesy, although it is important to note that Bunker Jonesy is not quite right in his head. He talks a lot about conspiracy theories and other dialogue, so he may not be a reliable narrator after all. Going back to the time he spent in the bunker, some of Fortnite's loading screen artwork gives us a bizarre new detail about Bunker Jonesy. When he was in the cave, he did a bunch of scribbling on the walls. A lot of this is just events that had happened in Fortnite before Season 8, such as the floating cube island or the visitor coming to our world through a meteor. In the bottom right of the same loading screen, you can see Caddis, the monster who fought the robot at the end of Season 9. And then came the loading screen that showed us Bunker Jonesy's clear painting of the fight between the monster and the robot. But how did he know that when he was in the bunker before Season 9 and the battle happened at the end of Season 9? Coming back to the present, a bunch of Jonesies are present on the island in Season 6, each with their own unique dialogue. Some of them are talking about a mysterious first Jones, and others are outright rude if you talk to them. All of them talk about losing their memory after entering the loop, a phenomenon we've already confirmed through the newest Batman comic. They also talk about the rumored first Jones, and mention that he has the answer we seek. The Jonesy at Coral also reveals that he came to the loop to study the Zero Point, possibly making him one of the members of the IO agency. Finally, we meet Bunker Jonesy, who gives us an important detail about the loop. Once you're in it, you're just a snapshot of yourself. He also says that Agent Jones doesn't exist, possibly making him a snapshot of the first Jones as well. Also, if you duel the Jonesy at Pleasant Park, he will tell you that the spire attracts people seeking its power, and that if it corrupts someone powerful, Agent Agent Jones doesn't stand a chance, and if Agent Jones fails, the Fortnite island itself is doomed. Agent Jones's mission doesn't seem to be getting easier at all. As the Foundation is trapped within the Spire, Jones is running out of time as he struggles to contain the Zero Point. Can you keep them all straight? Because it's getting progressively harder for me to know which Jonesy is which. We might have to start numbering them, labeling them. I don't know. That's what does it for me, but for more of our content, check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at Squad State. Thank you so much for watching, and now, here is your Victor Royale with cheese.